Welcome to lecture 27, Nested Loops. So this is the last lecture in this section, and I just want to briefly go over this concept of nested loops because I want you to be able to see it that so that if you ever see it out in other people's code, you have an understanding of it. We are going to use it again slightly in the next section um, on arrays where there's a concept called multidimensional arrays. And with multidimensional arrays, we actually use nested loops to access it. And we'll learn all about that in the next section. But for now, I just want to introduce you to nested loops and show you a basic program that you could build using nested loops. So this concept of nested things are, is actually very familiar. We've already seen nested if statements, which were basically if statements inside of other if statements. So like for example, if we had like int x equals 5. Now I know this, this example makes no logical sense whatsoever, but if I had like if x equals 5, then if x is greater than 5. I don't know, something like that. This makes no logical sense, but I'm just saying, this is just to demonstrate how a nested if statement works. If this is true, then it goes into the true section, which is this, and then it, sa then it says, okay, there's another if statement. Let me evaluate that if statement. It goes and checks this. If that's true, then it does that. Yes, I know the numbers and everything does not make sense, but I'm just trying to show you that this is how a nested if, statements, a nested if statement works. It's basically an if statement inside of another if statement. Now, nested loops work the same exact way. A nested loop is a loop that's inside of another loop. So you may be wondering, what can I do with that? So like I said before, yes, in the next section with arrays, we can use it for certain things with that. However, before that, there are also some other things you can do. For example, let's, let's start off by building a really basic program. Let's just draw a line of dots on the console. So just a little line of dots across the screen horizontally. So for that, I'm just going to use a basic loop. I'm going to say for int i equals 0, this is our counter control variable, semicolon, followed by our condition. So I want it to run 10 times. I'm going to say as long as i is less than 10, and then i++. plus plus. So we went over all this already. So now we have a for loop. Now inside of the for loop, I'm just going to print console.write. I don't want to use right line because I don't want to do a horizontal line, so I'm going to use just right. I'm going to put in a star. Right means that it will go across and just print on the same exact line. Right line will print and then go to the next line, but I want it to stay on the same line so it does a horizontal line. Okay, now let's go ahead and actually run this. So as you can see, yes, this it's a little ugly with that press any key to continue, but for the most part you can see it has the horizontal line going across. There's 10 stars right there. So we use a regular for loop. Now, what if I said, let's build a square? meaning that there should be maybe 10 rows of these stars. So this is one row, another one, another one, another one, to actually make a square looking kind of thing. So how would you do that? So one may say, okay, let's just go ahead and copy this code. Let's take another, let's copy this, copy this 10 times, and that, that must do it. Well, yes, we'll need to put breaks in between each one, because if I run this, this is going to just be one really huge line. So at the end of every loop, I'm going to add a console.write line. That will basically add an empty space. It will go to the next line. So, okay, let's go ahead and add that in between every single one, right? This is the best way to do it, right? So let's see what happens. Okay, let's run it now. Oh, it, it's actually starting to work. So we're kind of seeing it's building a square. So each for loop basically built one straight line. And then by stacking the for loops together, now I'm building many lines. And yes, we basically are accomplishing our goal, our goal of building a square. However, it's ugly. We have so much code copied here. This is horrible code. Even though it is kind of producing what we want, this is not the code we want to write. And that's exactly what a nested for loop or nested loop in general is for. As you can see, we have one loop behavior and then that behavior is repeated over and over and over and over again. So instead of repeating it, let's just wrap that inside of another loop. And then that will do it. So let's go see what that looks like. So let's take away this. We'll leave that right line because we need that. 
and then instead of duplicating it, let's just wrap that in another loop. So I'm going to say for int um, j equals 0, as long as j is less than 10, j++. plus plus. So I'm just giving it a new name, and then I'm wrapping it all around. So now it's this whole piece is inside of this loop. Now what happens if we run it? Oh, look at that. We get the same exact result. So it's basically, that's what a nested loop is. It's taking a loop and being able to repeat the entire loop a set amount of times. And then I could nest this again and nest it again. You can nest to any level you want. You can keep on nesting. It gets a little confusing, but you could nest as far as you want. So basically, that behavior of printing that straight line, I'm just doing that over and over and over again. And that's why I need to put into a loop. So hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. So if you can see how this works... When, when the loop starts off, j is 0, so we enter the loop j is 0. Now we enter this loop. This will run 10 times. Once it's done running 10 times, it prints out this empty line, and then it goes back to the top of the outer loop. Now the outer loop says, okay, increase j by 1, so now j is 1. And then now this will go all over again. It will go 10 more times, repeat. This will go, the outer loop will go up by 1, and then it will do the inner again. And it will keep on repeating that process. So the inner loop will probably print a well, will print a hundred times. It should, um, whereas the outer loop only prints ten times. For every iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop will run its full entirety. So it's ten times. It's the same thing like I did before by copying and pasting each loop over and over and over again. That's the result we're getting by nesting the loops. So this is good a little bit. Let's make it a little bit better. So right now, we're making a square, obviously, because it's 10 by 10. However, this does not look like a square. It looks like a rectangle. And the reason why is because our spacing is a little messed up. So if we use the placeholder method, so if I go 0 and then put in a little star as a placeholder. I wish I could type. Okay. So we put a little star as a placeholder. Now I can use the um, justification settings. I think we went over this before. But basically, I can... I can allocate for each character a certain, a certain amount of characters. For example, if I put a comma 3 here by this placeholder, that means that whatever is put into this spot will take up three spaces. Even if it only is one space, like our case, it's just a one single character, so it only takes up one space. Because I allocated three spaces to it, it will have those three spaces available. So let me show you what that it looks like. So now each character, each star has three spaces. So one, two, and then the character. One, two, the character. Now, if the character took up maybe two spaces, like if I did uh, maybe an asterisk and a dollar sign, notice what happens. So now there's only one available space and then one, two. One available space, one, two. So whatever is put into that spot must take up three characters. If you only put in one, it will leave the two empty characters. Now, if you look at the program, you have an empty space on the left-hand side, and that's because it's right justified by default. That means that the character that you enter in will start filling up the empty spaces on the right-hand side. So we have a little right-hand side, and then we have the two empty spaces to the left of it. To fix that, we can left justify it by just putting a negative sign. Now this negative uh, 3, the left justifies it by 3 spaces. So as you can see, now the empty spaces are on the right-hand side, which makes a better-looking square. So it's kind of looking better. Let's maybe make it um, 2. Everything gets 2 spaces, maybe. And that, yeah, that looks a little bit better. I could maybe even double to 4, but we'll leave it as 2 right now. So now every character takes up 2 spaces, which basically makes this kind of grid uh, layout. Now let's make it a little bit better. Let's say I want to change the size of it very quickly. And it's always going to be a square, so these numbers are always going to be the same, but I want to change it. Right now, I have to say, okay, let's maybe make it 5 by 5. I have to change it there, and then I have to change it there. I have to change it twice. But once I do it, then everything worked, and now it's 5 by 5. But to make it a little bit easier, I'm just going to make a variable called int size equals 5. And then I'm going to take that size variable and put it everywhere I see that 5 to make it a little bit better. So now, if I wanted to change this to maybe... Um, 12 and run it now it's a 12 by 12 square uh, maybe 15 now I could change it very simple and now the square adjusts very quickly and you can just grow and grow like maybe you can ask the user okay enter the size of the square you want to build and then you can uh, take the size and then make your program work very easily 
Um, just from looking at this picture, you could also think, okay, what, what, what other things can I do with this? Um, one thing that comes to my mind very quickly is you could build a multiplication table. So right now we're, we're basically building this table of all these dots, but instead of putting the dots there, you can just do, do a basic multiplication table, do one times one and then two times and whatever, how it works. And you could do the, the multiplication table. That may take a little bit of thinking, but I'm, I'm sure you could figure it out. But basically my point in this video is just to show you that how useful and powerful nesting loops can be. And like I said, we will see this again in the next section. So if you don't really understand right now, we, you will be able to see it one more time. But nonetheless, it's very powerful and it you should definitely see this at least once, even though code that it uses is, is not that common, but it definitely is out there. So that's actually it for this lecture. And in the next lecture is we're going to start going over the actual exercises. So there'll be three exercises for this section.